You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. I was reminded in an email today of the rather foolish offer I made to the Scripture Union staff when I was doing some teaching sessions for them back in August. I offered to apply the five-step process to a randomly chosen Old Testament passage. Somebody, I hope they were being malicious, said, What about 2 Kings 10? 2 Kings 10, in case you didn't remember, is the story where Jehu wipes out Ahab's descendants. And in particular, I was being asked about the 70 heads in baskets. I won't bother reading the story to you, you can read it in your Bible. It's pretty violent and ghastly stuff. I decided to take the challenge and look at what the five steps would do with a really dreadful passage like this one. So, step one, back then, what did the story mean? I think that for the readers back then it's quite clear that this story served to confirm to them that failing to listen to God, speaking in this case through the prophet Elijah a few chapters earlier, is thoroughly dangerous, even deadly. There's a lot more that could be said, but I think a study of the passage in its context, both of scripture and of history, would show us quite clearly that the passage was intended to give its first readers or hearers a message something like, Ahab failed to listen to or to obey God's commands and was punished. You Israelites are also a people who have repeatedly failed. That I think is the whole story of Samuel Kings up to the exile and you were punished. Step 2. Notice the differences that make a difference. Well, for a start, we're not part of a nation that's been called by God. They were. And for a second, we know about Jesus, and they didn't. There are probably lots of other differences that make a difference, but those two are really important differences that make a difference. these two things do when we notice them is to warn us against taking the details of the story and applying them today and massacring our bad government. They also remind us that in the end we are or will be sinners asking God to forgive our repeated failures for Jesus sake. And maybe they remind us that we can hope for grace and not justice. So step three what does this say about God? I think is quite clear, it's that God cannot accept human sin. Step 4. How do we see this in the light of Jesus? Or, since it's an Old Testament passage, how does Jesus fill this out or complete it, fulfill it? God still cannot accept our sin, but in Jesus he offers us a way to have our sin removed, so that in Christ we can come to God. Step 5. How does that work today? Well, we give examples of people who have recently come to God through Christ and maybe we make an appeal for the listeners that whether it's for the first time or for the five thousandth time we, you and I, need to confess our sinfulness and to ask forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Actually it wasn't a bad passage to have been chosen and to being given because I think the message really does come from the passage read in the light of scripture and the five steps really work I don't think that every random Old Testament passage will give an old-fashioned gospel message like that one but I do think this one does what do you think? did the five steps work? and how about you trying the five steps on some random but fairly difficult Bible passage that you find for yourself in Scripture. Tell me how it goes. Oh, by the way, I'll put a link on the website to where I've explained the five steps in more detail in case you don't know what I was on about with the five-step business. Bye for now.